If you open your refrigerator and the light does not come on, chances are it's probably the switch is doing something finicky. Um, and I'll show you how to fix it. Actually, we're gonna show you how to fix it better than just buying a new part, because uh, the new switches don't include dielectric grease. So this stuff isn't just regular grease. Um, this is uh, DC4, and they use it on battery terminals uh, and all kinds of other electrical applications to keep the arcing down, which uh, helps the corrosion. The switches are pretty difficult to get out, and part of the reason is because um, when it's on the refrigerator, all of this is hidden like that. So when you can't see, as uh, so that the anything you try to put in here will slip past the clip. You got to go in at an angle, um, and so it's easy to see on the switch that's out, um, and so that should help um, when we're doing it inside the refrigerator. So after we get the uh, switch out of the refrigerator. Um, we're going to clean up the contacts with some sandpaper and then use the dielectric. To remember anytime you're working with electrical appliances to um, make sure you're not working with live power. So flip the breaker or unplug the... So I got it out. It is pretty tricky. I'm going to push it back in so I can show you um, trying to get this tab right here. But you just want to make sure you're coming in from this side um, of the switch. So I can get under the switch a little bit here with my fingernails and then push the knife in at an angle. And now it's on the first step. There's sort of ridges on this, um, on the tab. So it's on the first step. And now I just apply tension out um, here again with my fingers. Um, now it's, it's under tension and I just push in. Um, and each time I can get up to a new um, ridge. And now you can see I'm out pretty far and once you're on the last ridge, you should be able to just um, pull it off. Once you're past the tab, the whole thing kind of just pulls out like this. Now getting the plug out is a little bit challenging too. We've got two little tabs here holding it on. Um, and so first, um, I like to get one of the tabs off and now pull it out, keep it in tension so that that little bump is no longer in the tab. And then flip it around and do the same thing the other side. Now none of the tabs are holding it in. There we go. Now, in order to open this cover um, to see what's inside here, there's some more tabs uh, that you got to um, look at. And a toothpick is really handy for this step. Um, you can sort of just get under there um, and pull it over the bump. Again, similar to the last time there. It's, it's right over that. Um, and then we move on to the next tab. There's two of them. Um, and the last one is <laughs> inconveniently placed underneath here, but it's basically the same. It's just harder to see. There we go. So you can get a knife under here and just put some pressure up and they'll pop off. So actually there's one more right here. This is probably the most difficult. You have to push um, in from the backside, kind of at an angle um, and then pry it out like that. Um, and you can see that Again, it's got sort of uh, this loop that fits onto that tab there, and you have to push it out. The way you see, there's actually a little bit of um, carbon or something from the arcing um, in here and on the cover there. And once you get this cover off, you want to be um, extra careful with the switch mechanism here. We've got some spring-loaded components, and if you flick it, um, too hard. It's possible for the spring and the slider to come out and um, if you can find your spring again you can put it back in but uh, they can disappear. Now in order to make the cleaning a little easier I'm going to take out this contact and this contact um, and it'll give me access to uh, what I need. So you can see a lot of sparking was going on up here the splattered stuff um, and so we're going to definitely put the dielectric grease here. We also gonna put it down here, even though we don't see any sparking because um, you know it could happen in the future. These pieces are pretty delicate, but a toothpick, um, you can pry it sort of both, both sides um, gradually until it should come out. One is the same process, just carefully lift it out. There we go. Wow, that is um, a lot of corrosion. Compared to this one, you can see it's a little pointy and this one's a lot more rounded. Of course, there's also all the buildup around it. We're gonna use some fine sandpaper to clean up the contact because um, anything too coarse um, will leave scratches. So this is 1200. Your finger will take off the rest of the carbon. 
This one is pretty bad. I'm going to pull it out, but I think that one can stay in. Also, you just want to make sure you uh, keep track of which ones go where. These come out just the same. Uh, just pry them out and we can clean it up. Now both sides of this contact are pretty well cleaned up and uh, you can see that there's a lot of material that's removed just because of all of the, um, the corrosion. Um, and so the, the gap, the distance between these um, has changed slightly and so we might need to bend them so that there's the same amount of pressure that they started with. This is the better side. I'm gonna put it in um, and then after all the contacts are back in, we'll add the grease. This top one is held in place, you can see by that tab up there. Um, so in order to um, even out the contact pressure, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, you can't straighten this one out, you're gonna have to bend this one up um, just a little bit. And now uh, it's slightly bent. It should slide right in. And I can feel um, there's a good amount of tension holding the contacts together now. And now this is probably the most important part, uh, the dielectric grease. Uh, you want to get a good amount um, in between here and the contacts. Again, the toothpick is, is helpful for this. So this is why, um, this step right here is why it's better than just buying a new switch because actually this is a new switch. Um, we got it only about a year ago and it's already having problems. And so uh, this will prevent um, the arcing and we'll get more than a year out of now, it. Very carefully, making sure all the springs are contained. Uh, just gonna test this and everything is moving smoothly. Um, you can see this generous amount of grease on there. I think we're ready to go ahead and snap it back together and put it in the refrigerator. Now putting this back together is a whole lot easier than taking it apart. Um, everything basically just snaps in. Um, and now we can plug it in and insert it. I can put it back on, making sure that the tabs line up. Uh, they won't line up like this. Um, so it should, again, snap in. It's hooked on that side. Um, it's hooked on that side. And the wires should sort of fit back into there. And now you just give it a good press and it's locked. We're no longer working on the refrigerator, so it's safe to flip back on. Light comes on immediately, that's great. And the up and down motion um, isn't causing it to flicker if out. If the spring does happen to come out, um, just make sure that the switch is in the up position, um, and then you'll need to compress the spring. This is tricky. Um, and then insert it in like that. Um, and again, make sure uh, you don't let the spring out. And that's how you fix the switch better than new. The grease will stop it from arcing.